Welcome to the thrilling final episode of our radio drama. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 175 of the Rotten Views Podcast. We have a fun one in store for you today. At least I hope it's a fun one, because as I'm recording this intro, I haven't actually watched the movie yet, so I don't know. It could suck for all I know, but find out at the end of the podcast if I liked it or not. But today, we are watching Digital Man from 1995. Before we get into that, though, uh, this is like the second episode of the New Year so far. We have a lot of stuff planned. I'm excited about this New Year so far. Other than the snow that's coming down outside, it's a little bit chilly, but, you know, I'm Canadian, so I gotta deal with it. I'm just used to it at this point. There's no point in complaining, even though I'm going to complain anyways, because it's snow, and it sucks when my fat ass falls on the ground when it's too icy outside. But that's besides the point. Hopefully you guys are here, listen to another episode. I know so, most of you guys are probably coming back. If you guys are new, I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. Make sure to hit that subscribe button or uh, follow button or whatever button it is, depending on the podcast platform you're using. Uh, also, before we get ahead of things, uh, if you guys are new here, here. Uh, for what I do with the podcast, I w- sit down, watch a movie from start to finish, hit all the points in between. So if you don't want to be spoiled on a movie ever, you know, just you know, just know what you're walking into at this point in time. I'll let you guys know before the movie starts. I got some business I want to talk about beforehand, like every other episode, because I know probably not everyone makes it to the end. And it's understandable. I get tired of listening to myself too. I just don't want people complaining that I spoil too much in the movies when I'm. That's my whole goal in this podcast is to talk about the movie from start to finish and hit all the points in between, so you guys know what's going on the movie if you guys don't have a chance to watch the movie of course now that we got that little bit of information out there if you guys could you know make sure to follow me on all social medias that's at type the links will be down in the description below of course but we have uh, all the you know main accounts we have the threads account the instagram account uh, x account the facebook page but the main thing that we're pushing the most is that youtube channel because we've actually been doing live streams i actually just got done doing a gta online live stream been playing that for the last couple days i didn't know there was collectibles on gta online so i've been doing that I've uh, been working hard, actually, at getting all those collectibles because they equal some cool outfits. Uh, and it's just because it's snowing and cold outside, and I don't feel like going outside and doing anything. So it's pretty much, you know, staying home time and just relaxing and staying warm, having some good snacks. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out the YouTube channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we have the weekly gaming video that goes up every Wednesday. Like I said, we've been doing live streams over there. I'm going to start putting out some more short content uh, of the YouTube shorts. Uh, we're going to be doing some drawing videos and whatnot, maybe making those into shorts taking the, the live streams and whatnot chopping those up as well so there's gonna be a lot of like, new content we also have old episodes of the podcast so definitely go check those out as well uh, i think there's a lot of stuff over there that you guys will enjoy and once we hit that thousand subs which you know it, it was coming up pretty close you know it was it, we were growing the channel really fast and i think we kind of hit like a little roadblock once like october showed up because at one point i was gaining uh 50 subs a month and it's down low now at this point in time which is fine uh but once we do hit a thousand subs i will be giving away some free artwork uh, so if you guys want to share the page, that'd be gratefully appreciated. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get some artwork to some lucky fans out there and we'll go from there. I'm planning on doing a lot of content. I want to at some point in time as well uh, do more uh, daily or not daily, like maybe two videos a week. Because yeah, of course I am doing two videos right now. I have the old episode of the podcast going up, as well as the new weekly gaming video. I'm hoping to boost that up a little bit. Maybe we'll do the short episodes of the podcast as videos as well, and post those on YouTube every Friday. I'm not sure yet. It's all up in there for right now. We have a lot of, you know, you know, our fingers are in a lot of different baskets and a lot of different projects. So we're just going to try reeling them in a little bit more and getting a little bit more content out for you guys. And I appreciate you guys, though. If you are a first-time listener and you made it this far, I know it's only like four minutes into the podcast, but I, I kind of get on a tangent and ramble every now and then. So I appreciate you guys 
guys for being here. And we're going to get talking about the movie at hand that you guys are here. Uh, maybe you guys searched the movie up on Spotify and you're, you got here. I'm not sure who's searching this movie up. Like I said, as of this intro, I still haven't watched the movie. And we're going to watch that here in a few minutes. But hopefully it's a good movie. Hopefully it's fun. Hopefully it's just silly. Who knows? So as we were saying, we're talking about Digital Man from 1995. It apparently has a 4.7 out of 10 on IMDb. A 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. And a 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Apparently 83% of Google users like this film. The quick synopsis on uh, Google just reads, An army sergeant leads the battle against a morphing secret weapon robot that turned on U.S. troops. Da 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 da. So the lead director and one of the lead writers on this was Philip J. Roth, who's apparently best known for doing Jarhead Law of Return from 2019. He was a writer for Apex from 1984. He was the producer for the 2001 movie Falcon Down. He was also the producer for the 2003 Dragon Fighter, whatever the hell that might be. Maybe we'll add that to the podcast list. It's got a 3.3 rating. Actually, none of his movies have really great ratings, but that's besides the point. One of the other writers for this was uh, Ron Schmidt, who's also known for being the writer from the 1980s. Seven Operation Take No Prisoners. He was also the writer for the 1992 Prototype. And he was also the writer for 1994's Apex as well. And then our final writer for this is Kenneth Melmond. I probably butchered that last name like I always do. Uh, his other writing credits are nothing because he's apparently done nothing else other than Digital Man from 1995. Yeah, quick synopsis on IMDb for this movie. And now control robot is inadvertently set loose in a small community and a crack squad of soldiers are sent to hunt it down. Gradually, the members of the squad begin to suspect that some of them are robots. I mean, the, the main cast is apparently Ken... Aldent and uh, Kristen Dalton and there's also Adam Baldwin who plays Captain West but I'm more concerned with the other supporting cast at least uh, because Paul Gleason is in this movie as well which I'm sure everyone best knows him for being Clarence Beaks in Trading Places as well as you know Richard Vernon the principal from the Breakfast Club of course and then someone else I want to mention is Ed Lautner's in this movie he was a coach from the 2001 uh, Not Another Team movie he was he's also David Decker from 1985's Real Genius and he was also Joe Camber from 1983's Cujo. The tagline for this movie is built for war, programmed to win. Now he's online and out of control. Nice. Enough of that. With that being said, we're actually just going to jump in the movie at hand. Uh, if you guys need a copy of this, you can find it for free on YouTube. That's where I'm watching it as well. So if you don't want to be spoiled on a movie that came out in 1995, feel free to pause the podcast here. Go watch it on YouTube and then hop back over here. But, you know, if you don't want to do that and you want to save a little bit of time, just listen to me talk about the podcast or talk about the movie on this podcast. And, yeah, everything will be fine because we're going to talk about all the main points. So we're going to get right into that movie at hand right now. Presents Saturday Night at the Movies. The t- television series which each week brings you the finest in recent motion pictures. Tonight, in our distant future, a military machine designed to prevent war. Digital man is the model of the perfect soldier. Has been programmed to start one. That D-1 unit aboard that ship has the launch codes for 250 nuclear missiles. But the world's most dangerous weapon... If that unit could gain access to an uplink, it could transmit a launch order. ...must face the Army's ultimate warriors. Then we'd all be in the middle of World War III. In a final battle to save our world. Public Pictures, uh, that's, a, I guess, a company that worked on the movie. It's like an eagle. Very uh, American eyes a movie. Uh, I've never seen this production company or heard of it ever in my life. But then it's like, Green Communications Presents. I'm like, I've never heard of that one either. This is going to be a fun time. I do like that the intro credits and everything so far are in that typical like computer space font that was used all over the place back in the day. And then we just see, you know, Digital Man, Construction, In Progress, popping up on the computer screen. If you see 
see some, you know, red lights flashing. We see this big door behind everything. Very sciencey technology aspect. And we see some really nice CGI for the time, where this like computer arm is moving this box, and we just see this 3D head being designed as this laser comes down and is printing everything out. It's very uh, top of the line for 1995. And we see the full character being designed and walking through. The 3D character design of this is very reminiscent of when I was a kid watching the reboot cartoon. This is exactly what the characters look like. I'm pretty sure they're a little bit better on reboot though, if I'm being honest with you. And then we see this computer typing up some stuff, saying alert that apparently terrorists have stolen launch codes for 250 nuclear missiles. And we see the army base, you know, just listening on being like, oh, well that's probably not too good. And of course, Ed Lautner plays General Roberts. And then we have Paul Gleason, who's playing Dr. Parker. And they're both listening to this as the computer's talking like, yeah, I probably should light the smoke because that doesn't sound like it's too good. And then we see a bunch of uh, military soldiers in this like secret base they're getting ready to prepare for war essentially for the terrorists and we just find out I think it's Baldwin Captain West he's like what's happening one of the ladies like oh we're locked out uh, let's get Digital Man program up and running and the lady that's talking to Captain West is uh, Gina uh, Kirsten Dalton who's like one of the leads apparently in the movie and then we find out the like head ups call West he's like yes the unit is in ready good mode uh, we just need the, the go for and uh, we'll launch it and then we uh, find out there's a getting ready to launch apparently uh digital man that's when we then see the cgi box being like moved out of the shipping container area and being like set into this long position and inside we see the i believe we see the digital man himself inside this uh shipping container that's getting like shot across the, the world somewhere i don't know where it's getting shot to but anyways digital man is played by uh, matthias hughes then we cut to where the terrorists are and they have two army guys you know tied up and gagged and then one guy's like yeah take care of the hostages so this big buff guy just literally shoots them both in the head but yeah the hostages just taken care of and then one of the terrorists is like ah something's coming this way and the other guy's like how's that possible we've jammed all the the radars nobody can find us out here and then they hear a blast and he's like ah that's no radar that was just an electrical storm we're fine and then the one guy's like yeah actually my screen's clear i guess you're right and then we cut and see the digital man who's in his little computer spaceship thing as he's like homing in on where these terrorists are and then we hear an air blast and and they're like, what the hell was that? And the one guy on the computer's like, actually, I don't know what that was. Like, the computer's actually, the computer guy's looking at a radar because he's got his whole computer and everything set up. And he never saw this digital man spaceship coming near yet? Even though you're apparently so, uh, you know, smart, you got, you know, all the other systems jammed so no one can find you? Let me see the digital man in his spaceship still. And then we hear another crash where the terrorists are. And they're like, oh, it sounds like something crashed outside. It's like, what, didn't he already just crash or did he just shoot missiles at you? What the hell's going on? here at this point in time and then the terrorist guy is like oh whatever hit the ground you know hit it really hard it might not be there anymore but little do they know we see digital man coming out his crash spaceship that went through the ground and he looks like the discount version of freaking robocop it's almost like the concept artwork for like robocop walking with a giant minigun and he's all supposed to be like the space fire and then we see one of the terrorists getting ready to type on the computer and then the whole side of the wall blows out because apparently digital man just you know shot his rocket through there and as the big buff terrorist guy's trying to take a leak in the toilet. And he's like, oh no, I peed all over the place. And then Digital Man just starts blasting everyone away. And at one point in time, one of the terrorists takes a little thing off the computer and goes to run away. And then the big buff guy comes out of the washroom and goes to literally the tackle Digital Man. And it's like him hitting a brick wall and he just pretty much knocks himself out because Digital Man just throws him off to the side. And Digital Man keeps going on killing everyone. Except for the one guy who took the... Uh, computer chip or whatever hard drive off the computer he somehow sneaks out the hole that digital man made and then digital man's following him so that guy's shooting at digital man but some for some reason digital man can't shoot this guy directly because every time he shoots it's blowing up behind the terrorist and then terrorist's like who are you and then digital man just shoots him there's a giant hole inside the guy's stomach he's like yeah you're dead now and then we see this really bad laser coming out of the side of digital man's head as he's securing the data launch uh procedure uh package that the guy was carrying because he's got like this hard drive that's got the launch codes on it, and he's just doing like a laser beam on it and the next thing you know he's like code secure it turns around and blows up the terrorist's base like i'm pretty sure they're already dead inside so you probably didn't have to do that but i get it it's okay you're taking care of the garbage it's fine and then we see this nice really cgi spaceship coming in like, we're clear for uh liftoff or actually descent we're gonna pick up the d1 digital man prototype and uh, take it back home and then inside this 
uh, spaceship running one of the computers is actually Clint Howard, you know, best known for being like the ice cream man and for being I forget what his name is, but he's one, he's a mechanic from the Wraith movie with Charlie Sheen. And then out of nowhere, Ed Lautner, General Roberts walks in. He's like, I'm surprised you would use a prototype to try and take on those terrorists, even though they had all those you know missile codes and stuff. That was a pretty uh, brave thing you did, and pretty stupid at the same time. And then uh, Robert's like, did you even talk to the, the joint priest and get the, you know, this so clarified and, you know, approved of? And then Dr. Parker comes in. He's like, you understand this robot's prototype? Anything that gets messed up is pretty much going to set us back on a lot of time and effort and money. We don't have time for this crap. So I don't know if there's like this high council. I don't even know what year it is, to be honest. It might have popped up on the screen. I probably missed them. not going to lie. We're probably in the space time future somewhere. I don't know. Hopefully it's not 2023. God knows it might be. And of course, they got Clint Howard in this movie like I said, and he's inside the spaceship with the digital man, and I don't know if he gets hacked or whatnot, but he's playing a robot, or at least he's acting like he's a robot. I'm assuming he's a robot. But I was like, hey, you gotta start uh, downloading the uh, data so we can see how the digital man actually did. And they keep talking to Howard's character. He's like, I, I'm fine. And then I know where he pulls out a gun and shoots the main pilot. And the other pilot's like, are you crazy? He's like, there's been a detour. We need to set our new course for the idle pilot to whatever the direction was. Because apparently he got hacked somehow. And then the main base where Wes and everyone else is. Like, uh, sir, so the uh, the package is missing. And nothing's showing up on the radar. And, you know, everything's just missing. And I don't know what to tell you, sir. And then Wes is like, so, uh... Sir, Ed Lautner, uh, sir, uh, we have a problem. And uh, Lautner's character, General Roberts, like, uh, no, actually, you have a problem because that evac has the launch codes on it. So you might want to figure out where the digital man is and where that evac went to because you're screwed. It's going to be your job. Then we see Hawkins, uh, Clint Howard's character. He's trying to, like, do a security overbreach on the digital man, download his data, download the launch codes, and then wipe his memory clean so he can reprototype him. But then digital man starts fighting it off because I think the other base is fighting it off like type it in you know trying to hack each other anyways digital man gets up and shoots clint howard right in the stomach and we can tell he's a robot because he's like smoking and acids all come to the world place and the next thing we know we see some explosions and it's a, a space marine kind of like looks like a test run of some sort maybe i really don't know what's going on i don't know if it's a test zone or if it's just a bunch of space marine robots fighting with really big ass guns as they're all running away from explosions because bad guys or cool guys don't look at explosions when they're you know run away from them i guess i don't know i don't know I got nothing. I also don't know if these guns are shooting fire or, like, missiles or what the hell is going on. The guns are, like, rail guns of some sort with, a, like, flamethrower aspect. Because when they're looking up close, <laughs> it looks like fire coming out of them. But they sound like giant machine guns going off. I have no idea. You know, they, they're working with what they got. And then next thing you know, with these four special marine guys have this, like, little controller thing that they're turning up the dial to. That shoots a green laser out of it. And all four of them shoot together at this tank, like their Captain Planet, to blow it up. And then they have, like, this one girl who's got, like, this radar. And it's like, ah, someone's trying to jam me over in this court. So all four of them just stand in a row and just shoot blindly into this one area. Be like, yeah, we'll blow it up. We're badasses. And the next thing you know, like, the training sequence is over. A big giant green laser comes out of nowhere. The next thing we know, we see them all in, like, this base taking off their equipment and getting ready to, you know, call it a day for a hard day's work. And we have Ed Lautner's character and Paul Gleason's character talking about how they need to get the digital man and get everything set up. And Ed Lautner's character goes on about how he was stuck on Earth one time when they were closing down the program. He's like, ah, oh, there's one god from woman that down that dust bowl that I just had to deal with. That I wanted to put up my own goddamn misery. Anyways, uh, Gleason's character is going over because they're watching the other crew fight and they're all robots or androids or whatever and Gleason's character is like, this is the best we got. We don't know if the D1 even survived but we gotta try and have something to go up against the D1 in case the D1's going you know, crazy. And then Parker Gleason's character, he's like, so if the D1 did survive that crash, I have my whole crew, everyone, scanning that whole valley with the radars and everything that that they need every kind of metal detector possible no one's going to even sneeze and not have myself know about that's how many people i got track in this area i don't think he survived though also like the main guy who's part of this new crew of digital people mercenaries or whatever there uh is billy i believe and he's played by don swayze patrick swayze's brother which is crazy to think of 
And it was this whole group of pe- people are for whatever reason in the simulation room where every now and then where they're working on stuff. Ninjas will come morphing out of the walls and they'll have to beat them up and then they get sucked back into the walls. I'm not sure the point of this room. I guess it's just to keep you on your feet. Then Ed Lautner's character and Gleason come in to talk to them. He's like, yeah, yeah, you guys are showing a lot of good work, a lot of good teamwork. Uh, just so you know, about seven, two hours ago, the uh, the main man, digital man, uh, went on to capture some terrorists and now he's actually missing. So I need to dispatch you guys into finding him and getting those launch codes so we don't all die. Then Gleason's character goes on talking about the digital man, D1, saying how he's the perfect soldier. He knows everything about combat, how to take care of himself, like if he gets injured and whatnot. He's he's a killing machine, essentially. And then Lautner and everyone thinks that the D1 actually hijacked the ship, even though it was Clint Howard's character that was hijacking the ship. And then D1 did kill Howard, so maybe he is kind of being corrupt at this point in time. Maybe the... Clint Howard did finally get like the virus or whatever into him that he needs. But now it's this team who thinks they're, you know, superhuman people and not actually androids, but they probably are androids. Lawler's like, so that uh, D1 unit has uh, 250 launch codes, and if he goes to activate them, we will be in World War Three. and I kind of don't want to do that. I actually want to go home and have my TV dinner and watch the Super Bowl. And then we find out they're going to Badwater, and apparently they're the salt of the earth, and apparently... Uh, Lautner's character is like, you tell anyone there, not a thing, nothing. They need to know nothing about what's going on. Even though we cut the bad wire, we just see Digital Man walking around with his gun out. And then we have a Digital Man who's looking at a, a satellite dish, and then he sees what's on the satellite dish, and it's people, you know, making love, getting down to it as they're watching it. And then, actually, this person who's having sex in the movie is actually Billy. I thought Billy was the other person, but I'm pretty sure Don Swayze is playing this random guy having sex in a trailer so yeah don squeeze my bad is playing billy the guy who almost just got his face blown off because digital man goes to shoot out and misses and then blows up his trailer and swayze runs to the sheriff's he's like i just cleaned that damn trailer what am i supposed to do now i don't got no place to live so yeah the main guy who's leading that uh group of soldiers must be sergeant anders i, I should have figured that out i'm it's late right now it's midnight i'm not gonna lie Anyways, then the sheriff starts shooting at Digital Man, and it looks like his computer system goes offline for like two seconds. And then Billy's like, damn, Sheriff, I think you got him. And then Digital Man comes back online and shoots his, you know, gun. An explosion happens behind the sheriff, and we don't see the sheriff get hit at all. But then we see the sheriff fall over dead. And then this lady goes to get in her pinto, but it won't start. So then she comes out, has a shotgun, and starts shooting at him. But then Digital Man blows up behind her, so she goes run away. And then this kid comes out of nowhere, and Digital Man's looking at her like, hmm, should I shoot it? And then we see sergeant anders and his crew you know speeding towards bad waters getting ready to you know take on digital man and then the asian guy on the crew is like god i'm getting some pulse cannon radar on the radar here or shots on the radar here and then they're like oh yeah yeah, yeah i can see it and anders is like all right let's uh let's at least fly over bad waters first and you know get a surveying of the area to see what we're dealing with and then, of course uh, digital man apparently goes to jam their computer system as he's trying to get a radar reading on them and then digital man just starts shooting at their ship and they have to you know be forcefully you know find somewhere safe to try and land because their ship is about to go down in the desert somewhere let me see the nice 3d digital ship that's you know smoking at the back a little bit as it kind of hovers over the ground as it slowly slides and then next thing they, they come out of it and like there's fire all over the place and there's some smoke all over the place like i, I don't know i guess you caught the desert on fire because your ship's going down and then susie's like sorry sergeant i lost hydraulics on the ship and i couldn't land it properly and anders is like oh you did pretty well for what you had to deal with and then the next thing you know the whole ship blows up as they're walking away from it and of course digital man hears that explosion going off and they try to radio back to the you know uh captain or general roberts and parker and stuff and they're like oh our signal's jammed we can't do anything about it and the next thing you know you see digital man shooting up at the you know the hillside behind them and then Susie apparently gets a kind of radar area where digital man is so we got we got to move it to an open fire spot they move it to an open air and they just start shooting at anything and hoping that they blow something up and then we have a uh, Lautner's character sending out everyone, you know, getting them out of the main room as uh, Dr. Parker, Gleason's character, and West, uh, Captain West, uh, Al. Adam Baldwin all have a conversation. He's like, Adam Baldwin's character is like, yeah, oh, sir, I feel like I'm responsible for this. And Lautner's like, yeah, you are. You can't help, you know, you can't even control security, so maybe you just, you know, go deal with something else because you're kind of useless. And Baldwin's character, 
uh, goes back to talk to Gina. And she's like, oh, so any luck, sir? And he's like, ah, oh, no. And she's like, well, sir, it sounds like they need some fall guys. And it seems like we're up the bat. And he's like, yeah, seems like that. So then Wes has Gina, like, bat tracking some signals to try and cover their ass, essentially. And then out in the desert, that new fighting force runs to the Billy. And they're like, who the hell are you? He's like, Billy, I'm from Badwater, and I'm not injured. And next thing you know, we see Billy's girlfriend running, chasing after after him, screaming, be like, Billy, why'd you leave me? And then she nuts him. And then we have the group of them all going back to where they came from. Like, they're following Billy and his girlfriend where they came from. He's like, oh, I wonder what happened here. Yeah, he's picking up a shoe. He's like, looks like she took a direct shot, I guess. And Billy's like, I don't know why it came after me. I was just sitting there watching some TV on. And then damn thing started playing with my damn satellite. And they started shooting at me. And the girlfriend's like, he blew up my damn trailer. And it's like the Asian and the black guy from this new fighting force are making fun of Billy and his girlfriend. Billy, they got that's some white trash there. And then Lautner's character is like, damn, damn, Parker, I can't find the damn ship. They seem to be shut down. And then Parker's like, don't worry. All the cyborgs on that ship have been implanted with trackers. I'll be able to find them. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So as they see a life, I don't know where they are. And then Digital Man starts chasing them down. There's explosions happening as they're walking through the desert. And then the Asian guy gets left behind to, you know, be the defensive force to try and hold back Digital Man. And then I know where Billy's like, yeah, you kill him. That son of a bitch wrecked my satellite dish. And then the music starts to pick up a little bit as we just see the Asian guy spinning around with his gun, trying to see anyone moving in between the rocks. And then he just starts shooting in random directions. And then there's like a Wild West setup where a shootout between the Asian guy and Digital Man as we see explosions happening all behind them as the Asian guy's, you know, screaming. And then next thing you know, he just, you know, he drops his gun because it looks like he's getting shot at. And the next thing you know, he explodes and then there's just a giant ball of fire. And then as the gunfight's going on, Billy just randomly shoots his pistol in the direction that the explosion is like, ha look, I got him. I blew him up. I did it. And then they run over to where the Asian guy was. I believe his name was Long, they finally say. And the Billy's girlfriend's like, ah, he he's he wounded as he looks like he's in pieces as he's still talking <laughs> and then uh, i believe it's Woon? no it's jackson sorry the asian guy is Woon, not long my bad uh jackson's like oh he's a cyborg that's weird we've been working with cyborgs the whole time and then we can find out that billy apparently doesn't like cyborgs he's like we've been working with cyborgs this whole time and then billy's girlfriend's like calm down honey there's cyborgs with really big guns let's not let's not piss them off so they kill us please and then anders is like hey billy do you know what this is and billy looks at her, he's like no i don't know some android shit <laughs> and, and anders is like no it's a neuron deceptor and he zaps him in the face with it and billy's girlfriend's like whoa you be careful you could have killed him with that apparently gina's not the girl that's working with wes uh adam baldwin's character the secretary like tech lady apparently gina's the tech lady for this new f- freedom force people that's one of the cyborgs because then anders starts questioning her being like huh you probably knew about this whole time you probably knew it was a cyborg because you're the tech person on this team i'm gonna see the team finally get into battle wars and then they're coming up to this bar and a bunch of rednecks come out with shotguns and one guy's like ah oh, you guys hold it right there before i shoot you and then he's looking at their guns he's like ah you know what we surrender actually uh please don't kill us and Andrew's like you know what you guys need to calm down put your shotguns down we'll call an evac we'll get you guys out of here so the d1 doesn't kill you <laughs> and one of the country ladies like you damn straight i'm not leaving this is my home i'll shoot you right in the head right now if i have to it, apparently this lady's name is mildred and she's got the worst acting like for an accent for like a hillbilly it's just so goddamn annoying and Eric's like, hey, uh, Gina, how about you pull up the scanner thing? See if anything comes up. He's like, no, nothing coming up in range. Might be at the old test research center there, nuclear waste center. Uh, you know, might be. Then somehow the D1's, like, hacking into something. I'm not sure. Maybe he's just having memories in his memory bank. But he's seeing Gina talking. And then at one point, he's seeing Ed Lautner's character talking about some stuff. So I'm not really sure what's going on if he's just having flashbacks or just researching his memories. I have no idea. And Jackson's starting to freak out to one of the girls on the squad. He's like, can you believe it womb we've been working with this guy for a whole year and we didn't realize he was a cyborg you know he's been on our team for the whole damn year we didn't realize at all i also don't know the girl that works with them just made a racist joke or a comment because she's like relax jackson sure he's part toaster Woon was because he's part cyborg but they'll let anyone in you're here right then uh enters and gina get a, a communication wavelength 
going back to your command center. And, of course, D1's in the area. He sees the laser beam going up, and this guy's like, oh, I better go over that way. Then Billy gives Susie, apparently that's his girlfriend's name, uh, a revolver. He's like, I need you to keep the robots off my ass long enough so I can fix the, the truck. You know how to use the gun, right? Anders gets a hold of uh, Ed Lautner's character, General Robert. He's like, so uh, evac's broken. We need out of here. We need the, the humans out of here because, you know, we don't know how many have already died, but they're all in risk. And he's like, also, oh, sir, I need to know how many people are on my team aren't human. And then Lautner's character just hangs up the, the call. And he's like, yeah, sorry. Going for a tunnel. Can't hear you right now. And then where Billy's got the truck running and Susie's running in front of the truck with the gun towards the soldiers. And Anders like, you get out of the truck or I'm going to shoot the tires out. Next thing you know, D1 shows up and Billy's sitting in the truck like, oh, please don't blow up my truck. You already blew up my minor trailer please don't blow up my truck but you know billy being the man gets really pissed off at seeing d1 so he floors his truck towards d1 d1 shoots a missile that goes through the windshield and out the back window and misses billy because he ducks and blows up behind him and then billy out of nowhere crashes his truck into another parked car even though billy looked like he was driving a straight line towards d1 and then billy gets out of the truck and runs away and we see d1 blowing up the truck then d1 comes out of nowhere of course because i guess he was hiding i mean he not out over because he was already there so i'm not sure where he went to but then he came back in the picture and the one soldier lady starts firing him but she drops her gun after like two shots because apparently it runs out of ammo and she pulls out a pistol to try and shoot him and then d1 just blows her up then we see baldwin's character and his little lady friend if i get a clue as to what's going on in this situation and he's like you know i want you to be careful but i need you to decode all this stuff to figure out what's going on here we see just d1 taking off in the desert and then jackson and his crew looking at the lady that just died and he's like she was a cyborg as well damn it and gina pulls up her little radar thing he's like yeah he's definitely heading to the old nuclear facility we better go uh take after him and billy starts freaking out he's like yeah you goddamn people you're all cyborgs just gets all mad at him then anders is like yeah billy it's your fault for your stupid stunt with the truck that got her killed then why don't you take the blame for it and then Susie speaks up he's like you can't be getting mad at billy also who's gonna pay for billy's truck to get fixed so that truck has exploded and is not getting fixed at all so then they know that uh, D1's going to this nuclear test whatever place. Anders comes up with a plan for him and Jackson's kind of flush D1 out towards the other three because Billy, Susie, and Gina are going to have this other area ready to detonate and that's all Billy and Susie has to do is like push the button and Susie's like well you think we're stupid we don't know how to push a button and then we have Adam Baldwin's character Captain West going in to talk to Ed Lautner and Paul Gleason and Gleason's like oh, just wait I'm going to set up this one thing he's like uh, Lautner's like what are you going to do kill him he's like no no it's it's going to stun him and then make him pass out eventually after a little while that's when Wes is trying to explain everything that he saw and how there's another uh, communications log and whatnot, and he starts, you know, grabbing his head and looking all confused. Lawler's character is like, "You, you okay uh, there, Captain?" He's like, uh, um, "Yeah, I just um, looking around a little bit confused, actually, to be honest with you." And uh, Lautner's character gets mad at Baldwin. He's like, uh, Frederick doesn't have that clearance to be tracking all that stuff. So you, she needs to transfer all her stuff over here, right here at this moment. Because she does not have clearance for this at all. We'll handle it. And uh, Baldwin's character is like, sir, I feel a little bit more comfortable if security was on deck. Because I don't know whose name is going to come up. And Lautner's like, yes, yes, we'll get a hold of security. As he opens up this box, pulls out a gun, and literally shoots up Wes. And Wes drops to the ground. And uh, Gleason's like, what's the matter with you? You didn't talk about killing him at all he's like what are you doing and gleason's character is like what are you doing lautner's like we gotta make it look like he took his own life and gleason's like you're freaking crazy you know he's no one's gonna think that he came into the control room to take his own life and that's when uh lautner puts the gun in baldwin's hand as he's dead and points up at gleason and then kills gleason with his gun that's in Wes's hand. And he's like, we were never partners, just so you know. Then uh, Frederick comes in with the security team. And she's like, what happened? Why are they dead? And uh, Lautner's like, uh, encryption on the uh, computer and uh, coding stuff. And Frederick looks around at the computer screen and sees that Dr. Parker's face is on there. And that was, he was the suspect for the fall. And then Lautner's character is like, yeah, so you sending the codes or might have just saved your life. Uh, Wes was doing it to save you, of course. Then we see Anders and Jackson following D1, apparently. Uh, Anders knows that D1's going to the communication room in this facility. And then we see Gina talking to Billy and Susie as they come to this, like, mineshaft-looking area, which is the Badwater Nuclear, which just looks like a mineshaft hole. And 
uh, Gina sets one little bomb down to exit hole. And she's like, when I give you the signal, you press this button, okay? Do you understand, Billy? And then Anders and Jackson are talking about their side of the plan. And Jackson's like, I don't want to be anywhere near this place when this whole place goes up because it's a nuclear plant, one thing. And I'm a human being. I don't want to die. You know, I'm probably actually not a human being. So the last two people that died on my crew were cyborgs. So I'm probably a cyborg as well. And it looks like Digital Man shoots a decoy that's going down this tunnel system. And then Gina's shooting down the hole. <laughs> and then Billy is like pressing the detonator button and running away. And then this whole bomb, like back half of this mine shaft explodes as we see Gina like falling down a hill and then next thing you know she's knocked out and Billy and Susie are screaming then something hits them which was that decoy bomb and they both blow up into pieces then Anders is trying to get a hold of Gina who's knocked out and Jackson's just like she's gone she's dead and Jackson's like Sarge I know you and Gina were more than just comrades so how about we just stick with the plan get this job done and go home okay Sarge sounds good right just stick with the damn plan then we have uh, Jackson starting to fight D1. And Anders like, get out of there, Jackson. He's coming at you. He's like, no shit, Einstein. I know. I'm trying to get out of here. And then Jackson's like, hey, Anders, uh, he's coming after you now. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm tracking him. And then now nowhere, like, D1 transforms back into his, you know, robot form because it looks like he was a little spaceship at some point. And then him and Anders start having a shootout between each other as Jackson's uh, yelling at Anders to get out of there for safety reasons. And then out of nowhere, D1 just stops. And this little spaceship thing comes around. And he's like, oh, Oh, what the hell? I don't know what's going on. Anders looks down as a little spaceship starts to beat bread. He's like, oh, shit, and it blows up as Anders is trying to run away for safety. And Anders is picking himself off the ground. He's like, damn, the guy's got a decoy device. So he's like, Jackson, uh, just be aware that uh, D1 has a decoy device, and we need to be on the eye for that. And uh, Jackson's putting his, like, bomb down. He's like, I'm going to blow your ass up. I'm going to blow your ass up. <laughs> and uh, Anders is like, hey, uh, Jackson, you need to get out of there. He's uh, following you. He's like, you're going the wrong way, too, by the way. He's like, what do you mean you're going the wrong way? I've already set the charge. You can't go back the other way. And Anders is like, well, I guess you better, uh, you know, defuse the charge then if you want to get out alive. And then Jackson and Anders are fighting with each other. And Anders like, a late dead has got 0.5 delay. If you run really, really fast, you'll be able to get by it before it detonates. We see Jackson running. He gets past the detonator and it blows up and it, like shoots him right into the wall. He's like, oh, wow, that hurts. And then uh, D1 just sh- pops up again. Jackson gets back up to his feet and he pulls out two pistols. Like, yeah, I'm going to fight you off, D1. And then D1 shoots him. And next thing we know, we see him blast up against the wall. And then Anders comes over and checks on him. And we see he's a cyborg as well. Shocking. And then Jackson's like, I always wonder why I never knew my family or saw them. Make sure to pull my tags, Anders. I want to die like a real soldier, please. Now Anders is all set for war. He's like, yeah, D1, it's payback time now, you son of a bitch. And now we see Anders just walking around with two of those big guns that each one of them had. He's got An- he's got his gun and Jackson's gun. He pulls them both up at the same time. And he's shooting D1 enough that it actually shuts off his computer system again. And we just see D1 staring down at the, the floor again. But that at that point in time, I'm not sure if these guns have a cool down here or whatnot. But they won't, aren't shooting anymore for Anders. And then D1 comes back alive. <laughs> and Anders throws the guns down on the ground. He's like, oh crap, I gotta start running. And then D1 just starts shooting some missiles and next thing you know you see the compound blowing up and Anders shooting outside and falling down through the the sand area and he's freaking out as he's ripping off his armor and his other shirt he's like oh damn what's going on it feels like I'm burning and then he looks up on the hill and he sees D1 stand there so he starts to run again he's like all right all I got left is my pistol Anders then runs out of ammo with the pistol so then he goes around away but where he runs D1 starts blowing up in front of him and then uh, D1's looking at him through the computer system and it says that Anders is weak 0% you know threat and then Anders is like why don't you learn to shoot straight you robot piece of crap so then we see D1 taking his gun off and taking off the majority of his armor because now they're going to have a fist to fist fight Anders starts fighting back but every shot that he hits D1 with it doesn't do anything to him and then he goes to punch D1 in the face and D1 just grabs his hand and starts crushing his hand and then he throttles him by the throat and throws him back a few feet and then D1 D1 literally picks Anders up by the throat again, or like the chin. He's like, I'm really going to kick your ass now once I get back on my feet again. And D1 goes back to pick up his gun. And Anders like, I thought that gun was dead. And then we hear D1 talk for the first time. He's like, recharge sequence 
complete now. And then next thing you know, we see D1 getting shot in the back, and it's Jenna, who's finally back up again, and starts shooting him in the back, so then D1 turns around, and then next thing you know, uh, Anders has that little control system laser thingy, and he's zapping D1, and that's the one thing that can apparently stop D1 for some reason, because by the time D1 slowly turns around to see Anders shooting at him with that little hand laser thing, D1 finally drops to the ground. And then Ares goes over to Gina. He's like, I thought you were dead. She's like, well, I guess you're wrong, weren't you? And then we see D1 talking as his chest is open. And his system shutting down. Something pops out of his chest and Gina takes it. And it's like a computer chip or something. But before D1 died, he also said he was sticking to his original computer programming. And Anders like, what the hell does that mean? And then Gina's like, hey, Evac's going to be here in five minutes. And then we see a ship coming towards him. And it's uh, Fredericks and uh, Ed Lautner's character, General Roberts. As they're just like, yeah, we're going to be there in a few minutes to uh, get the rest of the team back, right? Then we see the evac uh, spaceship finally landing. And Frederick's like, ah, 40 minutes on bad water is going to be pretty pretty long, isn't it? And then Ed Lautner's character, General Roberts, is like, yeah, sure is. And then he shoots the two pilots. Then he points the gun at Frederick. He's like, I, I'm not going to kill you. You know, you're the only one I can trust because our entire base has been compromised. Ed Lautner's character is going to make Fredericks transmit that the evac ship was getting you know shot at and that they need need uh, rescue because they're down and then as she's calling that in uh Lautner just shoots her twice once in the back and then once she turns around again in the chest then Lautner's uh character picks up the radio and he's like send immediate evac we're under small fire everyone else is dead but me come on evac evac and of course as he's getting ready to leave that evac ship he sets off a little bomb to blow up all the evidence inside the evac ship then Lautner goes over to see uh Andrew and Gina and he's like Gina did you uh, get all the uh, the information downloaded she's like yes and then the evac ship blows up and then General Roberts pulls a gun on both of them he's like give me all the stuff you got come on drop everything and then uh, General Roberts says that Gina and Anders are apparently the two human people on the team. And he's like, I knew cybers were never worth a damn. And I don't know where we hear a gunshot going off. And Anders drops to the ground and turns around. And we see the, the hillbilly chick and the other guy that was with her being like, yeah, we surrender. And they both blast him in the back. And uh, as they're walking off into the sunset, Anders is like, you know, Gina, I'm sorry for telling you that I thought you weren't real. And then they start making out. And then we see the old hillbilly couple walking down the road because... Because apparently she wants a beer and there's no sight of anything in sight at all for miles so i'm not sure where they're walking to and then the outro credits start to play and the music hits and that's the end of the movie wow <laughs> this was a weird movie uh not really that well done uh it's cheesy and silly fun uh stupid at times but i i do enjoy the actors that they got in it for somehow like uh paul gleason there's ed lauder shirt Clint Howard's only in for like two minutes, but he's cool. I like that. Uh, they have the forgotten Baldwin brother, Adam Baldwin, which is crazy. I don't remember him and really anything at all. Um, it wasn't too bad, I guess. It wasn't great by any means. Uh, on the rotten scale, I'm just going to give it 3.5 out of 10. It's not great. It's not something I'm going to revisit. I might do an art piece on it just for the sake of it, just for something silly and fun, because it also has you know Patrick Swayze's brother in it, so I might draw Billy, because he was, he was an enjoyable redneck character, at least. Um, and like I said, I like Paul Gleason and uh, Ed Lautner was a nice change because you don't see him in too much. You know, I remember the most in Cujo. Uh, but yeah, it was it was OK, I guess. You know, it's free on YouTube. What, what, what can you what more can you ask for? Yeah, I figured out what we're going to watch for next week. I'm really pumped for this one. I know this one's a good movie. Uh, at least I, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I love this series. I love the anime that goes along with it and everything else. Um, we're going to watch Guyver, the Dark Hero from 1994. I'm really excited to watch this one. And uh, actually, you can find a copy of it. It's not super great, but the quality is decent on YouTube for free. So definitely go check it out. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as always, make sure to check out the outro band, trial based horror band, Blood Opera. All three links will be down below. You can find them on all social media media sites so on spotify youtube soundcloud anywhere and ever check out their etsy shop as well they got some cool stuff you can buy from them as well so as always check out all my links below as well find me on all social media sites at typhon sign we got all the main stuff you know the the x page the instagram page the facebook page um threads if that's still even a thing i post a little bit on there i'm not super active on it but we're going to try and fix that all this year that's another thing on my to-do list is to be more active on all social media accounts and the main thing that you need to check out 
Or in my opinion, I would love if you guys checked out. We got the YouTube channel. We got the weekly gaming video dropping every Wednesday. We are doing live streams over there where we've been playing Fortnite, uh, Fall Guys, uh, Rocks or GTA Online. Uh, there's going to be more games. I'm going to play the nature games on there a little bit. Maybe do some Stardew Valley. I'm not too sure yet, but I want to just be like a variety streamer on that as well. And definitely, uh, you know, go check out the old episodes of the podcast. We also have shorts up there, and I'm going to be doing some art drawing streams and doing some, you know, how-to videos maybe for like the drawing side of things. Nothing else, uh, at least. Uh, but I, I think I know fairly well how to draw, so I'm, I might do a little bit of those. And maybe we'll do some contests on there as well. Like I said, once we have a thousand subs, going to be giving away some free artwork. So definitely go follow the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and, you know, share it, share it with your friends and enemies. And I hope you guys have been having a great new year so far. And I'll talk to you guys all later. Peace. Peace again. And so the dead will rise up and take over the earth, and you must, you've got to get to Dunwich. You must reclose those gates.